No. Okay. So my original, when I first started this class, I, my first round through, I said, okay, Spreadsheets are the most powerful data handling tool for the masses the earth has ever seen. And we're going to turn data 102 into spreadsheet. We're going to turn them all into spreadsheet wizards. And so my first round through, I had us do everything in spreadsheets uh, as much as we could. And we were doing, uh, I was asking people to do some ifs and um, even V lookups. And I, I thought, okay, we're just going to dig into the middle of it. Um, and I found that it was too overwhelming since some students were coming in with very limited spreadsheet skills and had not even comfortably written formulas very well. And so I decided to not have the class hinge on spreadsheet skills. And so that's why I decided to use stat key for all the conference interval stuff. So I would normally do all the conference interval stuff in a spreadsheet or in Python, um, but I've backed away a little bit from spreadsheet skills dominating uh, 102. Um, with that being said, spreadsheets are the most powerful data handling tool for the mass that the earth has ever seen. Uh, and every ounce of time you spend learning and wrestling with spreadsheets will be well spent and should never be undervalued. Um, and so to that end, I want to do a couple of spreadsheet related skills that for some of you are old hat and you're welcome to uh, dig into your analysis. Um, for others, uh, we want to give you this bolus of a primer to do this assignment primarily in the spreadsheet and the box and whisker chart. Uh, and then moving forward, we'll use stat key uh, if you want for a lot of things. And to the degree that you want to do it in a spreadsheet, uh, that's great. But um, the feedback is the class is too much in it and it's too full. So I just had to take some modules out. Um, so what I'd like, I feel like I'm, I'm not, uh, we've got a workflow that I need to document a little bit better. So let me just check the time, 7, 10. Okay, I have a think. question. Yes. Uh, you may be getting to it, but when you were had up that tool to do the whisker uh, box, mm -hmm. there was a part about the image sizing. Yes. Were, is the, are those specifics that we're supposed to be using? Yeah, I will. Um, I will include that in these instructions in our copy of the tool. We're going to stick okay. with the defaults. Um, okay. So the key is don't touch them. Got it. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Um, that doesn't matter very much because we can always stretch it. Um, that's a good question. So um, let's write. I'm going to put the to do list in our uh, in the schedule, and then we're going to take a break, and I'm going to catch my breath because I feel a little scattered and then you'll have a sense of exactly what to work on for a little bit and then we'll come back and see how we're doing. So week four, um, so this needs to become, this is going to be our um, Google Doc, uh, this is strip survey results shared GDoc. And so this is going to be linked to spring 20. Oh, I got my stupid thing in the way. Not stupid. It's very handy. Just so I was in the way. Um, here, share. Sometimes I feel in COVID land, major, major thing we're doing is document and file and link management. It's amazing. Uh, got it. Yes. Anyone with this can edit it. Thank you. So now um, you'll know where this link is and you can just watch for when your name is up there because you'll have a your own little section. Okay. And then this, the OneDrive, the OneDrive cloud drive, we're now deprecating. So whatever's over there, um, we we want to move over to Google Drive for this particular exercise. And then your box plot generator is there. Um, these are not important right now. So these are extra. Okay, so let's make, let's get the to-do list out of class. So we'll say this is not just out of class, this is starting in class and then moving to out of class. So 
step one is uh, an, uh, uh, extract record uh, student responses to your strip survey in a Google Sheet inside your uh, Google Drive directory. I will still call them directories even if they keep calling them folders. What is a folder anyways? Okay, so then step two is to um, compute a scaled score for your slicer in the spreadsheet uh, to be as a percent of total line length. Um, and so that means do this by adding a new column to the right of your raw measured value and divide uh, and then we'll do the formula. So uh, use formula uh, and then uh, let's add a in between step. So measure if you haven't done this already, measure your total line length. Uh, enter, enter this value in a dedicated special cell in your spreadsheet to use for scaling. Okay, so Ryan's, Ryan's uh, survey had so much foresight in its design that it's no longer a good example. <laughs> so goodbye. Um, let's find, so here's, a, here's an example from uh, earlier. So this is our, um, where is this one? So this question is, please rate your perspective on the correct amount of bike lanes in Pittsburgh. And that range is zero to 165 millimeters. So the maximum distance was 165 millimeters. And so what we'd wanna do is add a, just a single cell. Ideally this would, in, in the formal world, would be on, on its own sheet, um, but we won't do it on its own sheet. I'm going to go over and do this sample data um, because I don't want to use Microsoft. So in your spreadsheet, let's do a couple of fundamentals. Um, so if I have my survey ID, slicer response, um, this is where we're doing our variable name. So um, with the uh, the fuel types, how important was electric vehicles? We might have um, important elect. And then make sure you label it. Uh, we get, might call it raw measure. Uh, and then you can prefix your scaled column with the same beginning import importance of electric vehicle, but it's going to be scaled. So let me let this zoom in. Oh, oh no, it's the zoom, the lag zoom, sorry. So then this would be import elect vehicle scaled score. And now in order to scale it, we have to have a reference point for what was the max line length. So um, the best way to do it is uh, use a separate sheet. So I'll rename this is raw, uh, raw responses. And you'd have a dedicated sheet for your data dictionary that will list um, what all of the columns mean. So data, dict, and utils. So one utility would be um, max 
spectrum line length with labeled the cell in a dedicated way. So if it was 100, and, uh, if it was 6.7, you could even have inches in a separate column. It got to stay separate. So this stays a, a value. And so we want to divide each of our uh, raw measures by that scaled value. Um, so I'm going to grab these, this data from the car one. And this is where we get to learn our, our first um, important spreadsheet skill that you may not already have. Um, so there's my uh, IDs. And so we can think of a spreadsheet as a way to connect various our arbitrarily tabular, arbitrary and tabular structure data. Um, and so the values in our cells can either be uh, raw values, or we might say literal values, like 1.6, or we can give the spreadsheet instructions for how to calculate a value to put in every given cell. And so at the basic level, we can give it math problems to do uh, without any referenced information. So if I do, uh, if we do a little, this is tinker, we'll say that, um, so if I, the magic way to tell the spreadsheet that you're not giving it literal data, but you're giving it an instruction for how to compute data is the equal sign. So when we enter a formula, we start with the equal sign and then it can carry out all sorts of basic math and then it can carry out operations on data in other cells by referring to the cells using their coordinates in the grid where rows are numbered and columns are lettered. So I can give, uh, I can give formulas that just involve simple math problems with literal values like 56 times 45 and you'll see that it didn't display 56 equals 56 star 45. It carried out the instruction using a known mathematical operator. Now just remember that in all spreadsheets, in Microsoft Corporation's Excel, Google's um, Google Sheets, and in OpenOffice, they all have the same in interface, which is you have two modes. You have select mode, and then you have edit mode. You can get to edit mode one of two ways. The right way to start doing it is F2, um, which is important, because I'm. if we were here in person, if we were in person, uh, this is what I would do. I would say, all right, everyone, let go of your mouses, your mice. Um, you almost never need to use your mouse in a spreadsheet. So learning to navigate on the keyboard in the spreadsheet will be a gateway skill. So um, in your note sheet, on a little sticky note that you put it right on your computer, remember F2 is change into edit mode. It will help dramatically. The problem with double clicking is Double clicking, if your hand moves, is also like select, and people end up wrecking their formulas, and they're not using spreadsheets in an optimized way anyway. So remember, you're toggling between two modes. Select mode, you can move the cursor around with your arrow keys. And so everyone, uh, if let me see if I can see any other people. Um, put your hands on your keyboard and uh, practice some of our selecting uh, tricks together. So hold down shift and then use your arrow keys. That allows you to do block select. I want you to just play with it. Um, see how where you start your rectangle, um, you can start moving up and down from there. Um, so copying and pasting uh, is simple with block select. So if I want to move this up, I can select with my shift and arrow keys and then control X means cut. And so in this case, it keeps my original data, but it turns my selection box into little snakes. Um, and then I can use Control and V for Victor to move that data somewhere else and then keep on moving. Um, so keep your hands on your keyboard. Uh, and F2, Escape will get you out of edit mode. 
Um, and then your shift and select are, are super handy. Control page up and down, uh, sorry, control shift page up and down, move between sheets. So now our, uh, like we were saying, spreadsheets can do math. So if I wanna go back and tinker with that quest, that cell, I hit F2, I go back into insert mode. And now usually what we wanna do is do some sort of math on data that's in other cells, in which case we use a cell reference using letters and numbers. So I can say, go get me what's in cell B2, and then I can operate on it and say, multiply that by three. Um, now, I don't know. Uh, so what I did there was very handy, which is when I typed B2, the Google Sheets actually went and highlighted cell B2 uh, to show me. Uh, Microsoft Corporation and their infinite wisdom, their flagship spreadsheet program on Office Online, last time I checked, did not give you cell highlighting. Now it does. They brought it back. For the first three years, it didn't. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, so it went to B2 and found nothing there and multiplied it by three. What I actually wanted was B1. So the cell highlighting is super handy. And even Google Sheets gives you a preview of what it's going to say. That's kind of interesting. Um, and so I can do math on other cells. Um, so now it gave me the result of the expression I typed in. So that's all great. I bet a lot of you have done that simply. Now, here's our, our challenge. Our step here in our uh, to-do list is measure your total line length, enter this value and dedicated cell. We got that. Compute a scale score for your slicer in the spreadsheet as a percent of total line length. Use this by adding a new column to the right of your raw measured value. Um, so that's here. So I want to give this an instruction. I want this to be a percent. How, what percent of the total line score, 6.7 is, oh no, we need to make it bigger uh, since these values change. We'll say 23.4. Uh, wait, what was it? I shouldn't be using random numbers. Um, max measure 16. Okay, 16.5 is the max. Okay, so here we are on the other, wait, where, oh, there. Okay, so I wanna know what percent of 16.5, 1.6 is. So I'm gonna say formula, take the value in cell B2 and divide it by the value in cell, and this is where, I, if you have a mouse, this is one of the times when mice help avoid having to try it 100 times. So I'm gonna go and select the max distance cell in my other, in my other sheet. Um, and you'll notice how we could have typed it out by typing the name of the sheet and then an exclamation point and then the cell reference. And so um, if you're new to spreadsheets, you might uh, just put max distance in a box over here so that you can see it on the same page. Um, and sometimes that helps keep things uh, from getting too, too wild. In fact, I'm gonna do that here so that this demo is as clear as possible. So uh, we're gonna come up with an issue. So take B2 and divide it by whatever's in cell F1. And it uh, gave us a double value and we can um, use the magic formula paste to do this process over again, instead of typing in uh, B3 divided by F1, that would work, um, but it's extremely error prone. So not only is it time consuming, but the chance of you doing it perfectly every time are almost zero. So- Before you uh, drag that down, you have to make it an absolute reference though. And that's Otherwise, where we're going. Zero. Thank you. So uh, we run into a problem. What we wanna learn is how these formulas are actually working. So um, what the Excel system will, or excuse me, there we go, Microsoft in the middle of my brain. What the spreadsheet system will do is allow us to copy the formula in one cell into another. And the easiest way to do that with, if you're in mouse land is 
to hover over the box in the lower right hand corner of a selected cell, your cursor changes to a little crosshair. And that means, oh, whoa, too far. Um, and that means that when you click and drag in this mode, it's going to do formula paste, meaning it's going to read what formula is in C2, and it's going to generate a new formula based on the formula rules, which we're about to explain. So when I did this, I'm getting some errors, which is interesting. And it shows us, it will allow us to understand more about how the spreadsheet works. So jump into edit mode and hit F2. And let's see, well, why is it, a, this is a hash divide by zero error. Function divide parameter two cannot be zero. You can't divide by zero. So why did it do that? So you'll see what the spreadsheet was doing is it rewrote the formula based on its an interpretation of the formula in C2. And so it correctly moved my row down, but it also moved my F column down one row as well, which meant that I was now dividing by a cell with nothing in it and nothing it uses as zero. So I've got a problem. Um, and was it Amy with absolutes? Yeah. Oh, great. So the magic is uh, what we want to be able to do is give it instructions for how to do the format pasting. And that's rooted in understanding briefly about the formulas do not, uh, when the formula goes to the parser, it's not actually encoded as a cell, a reference for which cell in the master grid. The way that the spreadsheet thinks about it is what cell is referenced in relation to the cell in which the formula was written. So when I say, B, B2 times A3, and I'm just doing it by hand. The way that this gets encoded is take the cell one up and one to the right. So what this actually is living in the system as is one up, one right. And A3 is sitting in the system as one below, one down. So when we format paste, it's that relationship that is. Is it B1 or B2? Oh, sorry, B1, thank you. Um, it's that relationship to the cell in which the formula is written that is being transposed. So when this reference is pasted in here, it will follow that instruction, one up, one right. So we'll get, this is where we get B2. Thank you, who was that that was helping me? Alev. Oh, uh, what was the name again? Alev. Alev, great, thanks. Yeah. Um, and this one is one down, so this will get pasted in as a four. So that's formula paste. So when we can adjust how it interprets each value by using the magic absolute. So the magic absolute sign is a dollar sign that can be placed in front of either the column reference, the row reference, or both, which means treat this reference, this, this reference or this part of the reference as an absolute location in the grid and not a relative location to the cell in which the formula was entered. So um, if you haven't seen these before, they start looking kind of kind of cool, kind of techy. So we want the B2 to still be thought of as the cell directly to the left of the one in which you're pasting the formula, but we want this one to neither move in the column or the row. So we want to lock F and we want to lock one. Could you Do please say Terry? Huh. Yes, thank you. Wow, that you lost the magic just got evaporated. Okay. 
Um, so I'm making my, I went in here, I hit F2, get to edit mode. And now um, you can either, the hotkey is F4 on most systems on Windows and Unix. So F4 will toggle between those three modes of locking, um, F4 will toggle between, oh, oh, what did I do? Oh, I opened terminal. I thought I, thought I had a, a core dump and it was gonna be really bad. <laughs> um, okay, so I can toggle between absolute on both row and column, which is the default, absolute on my uh, row only or absolute on my column only. So it'd be, it's fun to tinker um, because uh, it's electronic, so you can just experiment. So if I try it with um, just locking my, um, my row, I can see where it goes from there. I think that one actually works okay because my, I'm not changing my column in my format, in my formula. Um, but in our case, we, with the value is a single location, so it makes sense to avoid future errors, so it makes sense to lock both. So we wanna put a dollar sign in front of the F and the one. And so now, this didn't change um, because it's the a point from which we're drawing all the copies. So now when I do my draw down to the end of the data, I always, always, always need to spot check and inspect my formulas. Um, I have had many moments of feeling chagrined where I submitted data analytics projects to clients and I didn't check my formulas and my invoice was wrong and I felt like a, felt like a goon. Um, so this seems to be working. I got my cell one to the left and then F1 is staying in place. So this is, these are the scaled values on which you want to generate your box and whisker charts. Um, and it's often helpful to uh, tweak the display of the formatted data to include a unified number of decimals. So I can come here to um, format and then number, and there it's getting so good. Um, we can do, uh, where's the, just a little box? Um, the easiest one, I guess, is just to use the toolbar and you can uh, chop off decimal places. Maybe we had uh, your maximum too. I guess we, we have, did you get three sig figs in your ruler? Did you get two decimal places after? Yeah. No, one. Okay, so um, you really have three, uh, you have three sig figs there. So this is, these are your values. Now it might make, actually might make sense to, um, since we're, oh, then we need to, uh, if we're all using a hundred, we might as well, we should multiply by a hundred and turn it into a percent. So um, we can either do that formulaically. It makes more sense to display it as a percent using the built-in conversion tool. So I formatted it as a percent, and so it multiplied all of our values by 100 before displaying them, and gave us a nice little percent sign. Um, and that also conveys the idea that this is a scaled value from this. So that, that's our first step in order to compute our analysis. Oh, I understand now why um, this was listed for a week later. So. Uh, this is taking, there's so many little individual parts of this that we won't even worry too much about our um, aggregate analysis because we generating all of this is going to be our project for the week. So let's keep going on our to-do list. Um, use formula magic to generate scaled, it's not formula magic, formula master skills to generate a percent of total line distance. Don't forget absolute Don't forget an absolute reference T 
to your uh, total line length. Now, um, so then with scaled values, compute your five number summary, i.e. Uh, compute the, compute your for uh, your aggregate responses. Okay, so the first step is to do it with all the responses uh, and together. And then we wanna slice them and dice them. So let me pause here for, uh, for some questions. Now, actually, let me actually do that. Let me pause for questions and then, then I'll show you how we can do the five number summary uh, in, in Excel, in spreadsheets. Quick question, when you're calculating the, um the first quartile or quartile, the third quartile. If yes. you have like an odd number of responses, are you doing it the same way like you do the medium, where you take the two middle and then on the average? Yes. Okay. Thank yep. you. And uh, we'll do it in the spreadsheet here in a minute. Um, questions on this this uh, step? I'm going to put your hands down. Raise your hand, your digital hand, if you've generated your own. Um, absolute reference before in a spreadsheet. I want to see where we are in spreadsheets. For how many of you was that an old concept? Oh, good. More, more many more than the average ratio in 102. So um, that's great. Um, please share out and help each other uh, as we go. So um, let's take a break uh, for. Uh, let's. Let's go till 55, so 755, we'll jump back and do some filtering. Um, that should give you enough to start tinkering with uh, and generating your um, box plots if you wanna try that for a little bit. So let's come back in 15. It's okay, hopefully we'll come back. Um, so I took the time during the break to get our, um, procedure actually written up. So if you join me back on the schedule, once again, who's your friend? F5 is your friend. Um, so I, I cleaned it up. So now it's all in a nice big box. So you know what to do. <laughs> um, and so I want to pick up with this. So we've got our scaled values. Compute your quant profile for your aggregate responses, not yet sliced. Um, and so this is where we get to uh, dig into a couple more of our spreadsheet skills. So um, keep your, uh, once again, uh, I'm gonna be demonstrating this all on the same sheet. In a larger data set, you would do your analysis on a separate tab so that you can export the tab as raw data and not have the analysis in there. But uh, we're, we'll demo it right here in um, on the same tab. So I want to see if I can zoom in here. This is what we want, that's better. So um, this is our utility. You can get fancy with your color coding if you like. So maybe I put my utility ones in blue and then I can say, um, quantitative profile of, uh, and then the name of your variable, uh, importance of elect vehicles scaled score. So I want you to get in the habit of thinking about a column as a variable that has a ID that is properly named with no spaces or weird characters. So I, uh, I'm i gonna kind of block all this off and make this our little profile color because we'll be doing this for our sliced values as well. Let's choose a nice little, uh, a little 10. Okay, so referring back to our, our profile, um, 
if you grab the editable one, I'm surprised I didn't get this in a spreadsheet. It's probably sitting somewhere. Um, I might just dump this in with copy and paste for reference. So I, um, so I can put them in spreadsheet form. Um, and so this is where I'm going to label my, uh, my values and then I'll compute them over here. Um, and so let's go Q1 and then uh, we want to get ready for our box plot. So we'll say min uh, left whisker Q1 median Q3 then right whisker I bet my caps is just killing. I, I should be consistent. I do Java all day, and I can't bear to start things with capital letters. And then I realize that it looks outside of Java. It, it's not very pretty. Um, right whisker, max. Oh, and we forgot n. So get in the habit of you know uh, tinkering with your selection by um, hand. The other downside to doing your analysis in the same sheet is that if you want to use add and move uh, rows, you're going to grab a bunch of data along with you and you don't like that. Um, so, and then what will be helpful is to stick IQR um, maybe IQR goes along with median, so um, Oh, so this is 1.5, um, or no, IQR here, and then we'll do our whiskers. So what we've got in line here is set up so that we can use our formulas to compute uh, these values in here. And built into your spreadsheet are, of course, a bunch of mathematical functions we'll use. Uh, we can use some of them for grabbing our quartiles. We can also do them manually. Um, so remember, formula is a computed value that has an equal sign in front of it. A function would be a set of code that comes with the spreadsheet that can operate on a chunk of values and give us the data back, just like in programming, we're programming a spreadsheet. So um, as many of you are probably familiar, it seems like a third of us are in done medium level spreadsheet stuff. So when we use a function, we are giving it an input in the parentheses. We give it an argument. So Google Sheets is really good at this. And I like doing it in Google Sheets instead of um, OpenOffice for this first demo because it's very helpful. So the functions that are going to be handy uh, will come up as you start typing letters. Um, it'll even guess. Um, if I start typing G, it instead of giving me a, a cell reference, it'll search its function library for us. So min has is built in, and so when you are ready to use that particular function, we give it an open paren, and then the documentation for that function pops right up, which is um, Google's really good at UI. So it gives you a nice example. It tells you how it works. Um, and it'll even let you link to the full full page on it. So um, what we'll be giving each of these functions is a range of cells on which to operate. And what we'll find is that we will keep reusing this list of scaled values so much that it will be helpful to, uh, to name this range. Um, and so that allows us to use a name to refer to this block of cells as a whole, and we will avoid the risk of mistyping the range uh, by hand. So if we um, right click the selected list of scaled values, one other spreadsheet trick is if you're in a row of data and you want to select all the data until there's no data, a shift and control and then a down arrow will select until the contiguous block of values ends. So the first open cell. So I selected that whole range, and then I can do a right click and say, define named range. 
So in this case, I could do, um, I might call it like, uh, shorter is better. In this case, I'm not going to use that whole variable name. I'm going to abbreviate it. So like um, vehicle scaled score um, aggregate. And so you'll see that you can learn spreadsheets just by reading how the spreadsheet does stuff. So we can always prefix a cell by its um, sheet name and then an exclamation point. So instead of typing this every time we can type vehicle scaled score aggregate into our functions and look it even gives you a tip they're really getting good at spreadsheets um, and we can see that get pulled up in a named range pane that comes up nicely and we can tweak it later if we need to so another handy thing people will know you're a spreadsheet whiz when you start naming ranges right off the bat um, it'll really help cut down on errors so now we can write a formula that includes a function like min and we can vehicle oh look it even automatically gives us our named ranges by alphabetic lookup so i can say give me the min of my vehicle scale score aggregate get in the habit of closing your prints it'll probably do it for you but you'll often start making functions with multiple formulas with multiple functions so um give it your uh give it that closing paren and hit enter and it'll compute it we can hit f2 and check it um, see that it got the right range so that's super handy so we can do um, I'm gonna do let's do the easy ones first so we can do min and max vehicles uh, uh, vehicle scaled score aggregate great so someone put a tick all the way on the end um, then we've got median as well it's a built-in function so give it our range again vehicle scale score aggregate super handy um, now our iqr is the a linear distance between q1 and q3 so let's grab those um, in this case we're going to use quartile and um, who asked me about the computing of it that was me who's me What's your name? Sorry, I was muted. It was Drew. Oh, Drew, thanks. Um, so it looks like this is defining quartile um, as the nearest value. So uh, we'll, we'll use its definition for the sake of not rewriting the function. So once again, it's, it's not, uh, there's no universal on how that works when, whether the number itself is the line or the computed line is somewhere between numbers. Um, I think percentile, a, a percentile definition would strictly be uh, the value below which that percent lies. So maybe it is a more unified, but I've seen quartile go with the average in other places. So quartile, notice this is fun because quartile is a function that takes an input range and then a second argument, which is which quartile uh we wanted to compute so we're getting if you haven't done much programming this is universal across almost all programming languages so spreadsheets behave and can help us be better programmers so i can give it my same range vehicle scaled score aggregate and then what's handy is when i give it a comma the documentation even lights up and says you're now wait we want your quantile number so it's it's like interactive documentation it's very satisfying to program spreadsheets um, so we can give it, in this case, we want our first quartile. And so I close my parens and I see my nice looking function. I even got my orange letters. Um, and so let's see where this, so it gave us that. Now these, these somehow got, uh, they're not all unified in percent. So there's our, our Q1. Again, I can check it. And then let's grab our Q3 quartile and I'll give it my vehicle scale score average and then I want third quartile um, and we can check uh, fourth quartile should be the same as max yeah 
Okay, so that's it's good to check your tools. Max. Okay, so then we can use our manual formulas for the IQR since we've got our Q1 and Q3. So this is Q3 minus G7, G10 minus G7. Give it a sanity check. Looks good. I always like to recheck my formulas and the highlighting helps a bunch. So that got our, our range. And then I might do, uh, I could do a helper here and I'm just going to put, uh, uh, when possible, we like to avoid magic number coding. So uh, one way that we could have avoided, uh, the way that most folks that don't know about absolute references would have avoided absolute references is by hard coding the max distance in each formula in which case I've got this 16.5 sitting there. And so any other human that comes along will have to scratch their head. And if you're lucky, the 16.5 is within eye shot of where they're seeing the magic number and they can make sense of it. Um, but when impossible, we wanna use named values, named, uh, we wanna put magic numbers or, or single scalar values that are useful in analysis in, an, in a cell that has a label associated with it. Um, so, it is readable by other humans. So I'm going to use that 1.5 to um, multiply with my IQR to get my left and right whisker. So in this case, uh, right whisker is defined as one and a half above Q3, one and a half IQR above Q3. So I can say, um, this, and if I want to get fancy, I could, um, not fancy, but uh, since we're doing our named ranges, it might make sense to name this uh, maybe it won't let me do a cell. No, it will. Yeah. Um, uh, I, IQR multiplier. So now when we write our formula, the formula looks nice and we could name all of these if we wanted um of course so right whisker will be q3 so g10 plus iqr multiplier times uh, our iqr um, and notice that was a that was a double f2 click uh, to get from cell select back to true edit mode. So I care multiplier times G11. No, G10 should be G10. Oh, no. I G10 plus 1.5 IQR is G9. Sorry. G9. Good. So I got my nice little coloring there. Sorry, I missed. How did we get the IQR multiplier again? That uh, comes from the book, the documentation that box plots. It's a generally accepted multiplier for the IQR making box plots. Okay, I see it now. Thanks. Okay, your uh, G9 does not match up with where my cell reference is. So which G9 pulling? Uh, which G I'm pulling the IQR. So right whisker plus multiplier times my IQR value. So this would, this is a good case in which I'm going to label IQR. I'm going to name it so that those formulas make more sense. There, now our formulas are gonna be beautiful. So now we can say, um, let's just do it. 
Ah, it doesn't like that. So we'll say Q3 plus the quantity IQR multiplier times IQR. Good. So that is a little more readable. Right whisker, 138.64%. Remember, that's a theoretical value that is used as a threshold for determining outliers. So the fact that it exceeds the theoretical maximum percentage, in this case of 100, should not be concerning. Um, so our left whisker, again, is going to be Q1 minus the quantity IQR uh, multiplier times IQR. Negative 5.61. So we got to, it'll be fun when someone has some outliers. We haven't had those yet. Hi, I'll, um, sorry, how did you calculate the Q1 again in the Q3? Uh, yep, so I use the quartile function. And the quartile function requires two pieces of information the range of data over which it should be computed, and then which quartile number. So in my case, I used one for Q1 and three for Q3. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, and so this is the value. These are the, this is the data that we can now use to generate our, um, our box plot like we demoed before. Um, keeping in mind that in the circumstance that you have outliers, the min in your box plot will actually be, um, oh, wait, did anyone catch my, get my error? I goofed, I forgot something. I'm, I'm, I, I mislabeled. Your, uh, your so whiskers are supposed to be defined as fences? Yes, thank you. Was that someone else was jumping in there? Were you on that on that train too? No, I was thinking N. Ah, yeah, we gotta do. We can do N too. So let's do N. N we can compute with the count function. Um, uh, if you want to bring out your inner nerd, looking through uh, on a on a slow Saturday night, looking through function lists. In spreadsheets is a great is a great qual is a great qualifying activity, um, and they're fun because they're grouped by um, uh, they're grouped by kind of domain of function. And so, um, let's see. I think the learn more probably gets you a really nice interface to explore. Well, um, yeah. So you could narrow by. Um, that average chi square so many fun stuff so much cool cool uh, cool areas of exploration spreadsheets anyone know the name of the first um, spreadsheet the killer app on computers I'll be very impressed and no no uh, googling is allowed but keep the answer to yourself it was the it was the spreadsheet director the program that made computer uh, personal computers seem like a, a business reality. No one? Was that Lotus Notes? No, good guess. Very good guess. It was VisiCalc. VisiCalc. 83, I believe. Um, uh, wait, this thing, it's F11. Uh, there it is. Yeah, VisiCalc was the first one. Killer app of the personal computer, they say. So we can use a count, um, and count just returns a number of numeric values. So we can just tell it how many values do I have in vehicle, um, scaled score, aggregate. And there's our N. And let's uh, clean this up a little. Okay, so yes, these were not my left whiskers. This was my left fence and right fence 
And so our left whisker, and I'm gonna, now this is, um, this is the kind of thing that's worth playing with and proving to yourself that this is in fact the case, the way that spreadsheets work. So um, most spreadsheets have built into them an auto formula correct tool that if you move a cell that is referenced, now in this case we named it, but if I moved, um, uh, if I move a cell with the formula with cut and paste, uh, it's good to check to make sure that it correctly moved the formula to follow along, uh, cur moved every other formula that references that cell to see that it in fact moved. Um, so our right fence, um, actually I want to move that down. So I want right fence here, and then we want this to be right whisker. And so in our case, the right whisker is the same as what? The max. Max. Yep. And so instead of typing a hundred percent, I, I don't want to recalculate. Um, uh, I'm going to just reference a cell and it'll, it'll tell me what the value is in there. So I could even make a comment or a note that these are the same. It makes sense to link them because they are conceptually the same given that the right fence is higher than the highest value in the data set. So, um, linking that to max makes conceptual sense. So then our left whisker will be above these ones. So I'm gonna scoot this all down um, and clean up my spreadsheet. Teach you formula paste in a second, or format paste, uh, left whisker. So again, this is conceptually the same as my min. So I'm just gonna point the cell there. Um, there's a handy tool called format paste in uh, word processors and spreadsheets that can help clean stuff like this up. So if you select a cell in the little paste, you select the cell and then you click the format paste. It's usually a paintbrush. For some reason, they decided to go to a roller um, in Google Sheets. Um, so you roll it, you click it, and so it stays active. And then any other cell that you click will receive that formatting, but not the values of the formulas. So that's handy for stuff like this. Um, if you double click it, it, um, it usually stays on. In this case, it does not, um, but that's beside the point. Okay, so left fence is below the min, so the left whisker is the same as the minimum. All right. So we're in good shape there. Uh, this was make, I'm making a big mess of all my... Oh, I'm sorry, can you explain why the whiskers are the same as the max and the min? Because they're, uh, the left whisker, uh, the fence is below the minimum value in the data set, meaning all of the data points are considered not outliers. Therefore, the left whisker will extend to the lowest value. The way to think about left whisker and right whisker is that it extends to the lowest and the highest value that are not outliers. Maybe that's another way to explain it. And so we, we're using the fence to determine outliers. And so once we do decide that there are no outliers, that fence just goes to the lowest value. So fence is here. Anything over here is an outlier. Here's fence. And so if this is, if the min value is to the right of the left fence, is greater than the left fence, then the whisker will be the min. So this is left whisker and min because the min is to the right of that fence. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, thank you. So think like, are there outliers? No. So fences or whiskers are the min max. Uh, can you give uh, the opposite example about this one? Yep. Uh, you mean on the right? Yep. No, no, not right. Uh, this is not the below. This is the above the uh, the, the fence uh, higher than the whisker. I mean. Yeah. So let's. Um, I'm mean gonna. Minimum. Yeah. I'm gonna let's doctor this data set a little bit. 
this is the kind of thing I would document. <laughs> uh, I've I've doctored it a bit. So let's um, let's create. So the nice thing about spreadsheets is that if I found that I mistyped something, um, the formulas will readjust. So let's put in. Um, so in order to generate some outliers, what I'm going to have to do is shrink my IQR. So what I need to do is add um, data that's inside the IQR. Um, so if we do a bunch, where is our, our medians? About 63, so about 10 inches. So if I say, and this is good practice because all we have to do is change the named range and everything will work. So if I put a bunch, if we increase to have our data much more heavily clustered, that means our IQR will be much narrower and our threshold for outliers will um, get drawn in. So I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna extend this. So I've got a bunch more stuff in the middle. And um, might maybe be fun to do a histogram of this since we're at it. Um, so, so now if we come into ranges, uh, how do we get our ranges back? Pains, pains, pains. Um, I'm going to name this N. Define named range. How did I get there? Okay, so I will come in here because I've extended my data. I'm going to come into vehicle scaled score aggregate and I can redraw the range by clicking the select data range. And now I'm in active select mode. So I can come here and drag this to the end and now it changed the encoding of that range that I've attached to this name and we'll see all the magic here in just a second watch how the numbers change this is going to be really cool ah look ha ah, so great so because we were we were um, consistent about using our named range um, whenever that range changes, every value in the spreadsheet that depends on that range has changed. So now this is perfect. So see how we've got, um, let's, let's make a histogram of this. So data, um, insert chart. Nope, you didn't get it. Oh no, I click learn more, sorry. <sighs> okay, um, chart type. Okay, so we've got a nice, we've got a taller middle, a taller mound. So now over here in our computations, Let's get rid of our, our fences have been recomputed, but we want to say where are our left and right whisker going to go? And so we ask ourselves, um, now our right fence is less than the max, meaning there are some values that are above the right fence or higher than to the right of the right fence. And, um, Nicely, we have some values. Our min is below the left fence. So anything under 36.6 .6 is an outlier. So let's label that. Anything uh, values under to the left of left fence are lower outliers. Um, we would say extreme, there, we consider them extreme values. Um, We've heard of extreme coding. Well, this is extreme value. Um, 
So then here is values uh, over to the right of right fence are upper outliers. So the right whisker I deliberately put above the right fence because conceptually you'll never have a right whisker that is above the right fence because that breaks the definition of a of a box plot. So what I would do in this case to determine my right whisker is I would sort my data and look for the value that's directly on the inside of my right fence. So we'll do that here. So let's zoom back to 100. So let's practice sorting. Um, the key to remember with sorting is select all your columns. Um, or it will only sort, sort the selected data. So that's a, that's a great way to turn nice data into gibberish by accidentally only sorting one column and suddenly your, your records have been uh, discombobulated. So I'm going to select all of my data, including the headers, and then pop up and say data sort and then we tell it by which column um, ooh it's actually called slicer it's doing what we're doing manually um, so i want to um, sort by column where's just my normal okay so that's what we want we want this box so this is an important box so we say yes we've got a header row this is why it's important to have the header row be on the first row and not have a silly title up there just put the title somewhere else um, so I can now select my variable name, vehicle scaled score. I'm going to sort um, by ascending, which makes logical sense. So now I've got, you can see my IDs now have moved along with my values. Um, that's very important. So now I can come here and see where my right fence is. 84.85. So it's in between these two. So these three records contain observations that are considered extreme values or outliers. And so those are the ones that we would put in here, uh, upper outliers, above that upper fence. You can think about it conceptually like a fence, but the fence keeps in uh, values that we consider in the norm. If you're outside the fence, you're extreme. Um, and you only make a box plot for normal values. I shouldn't say normal values, for um, values in, uh, I don't have the right language anymore. I'm, I'm too tired. Um, so now I will select my upper whisker. My upper whisker will go to the highest value inside the fence which is 84.55, highest value inside the fence. We can label that here. Um, and now in this case, I'm going to actually click it. So I'm, there's no errors. So we might, uh, this would be a good case for a named cell. So we could say define named range and say this is upper whisker. Perfect. Um, that's great. And so then here I'm going to say this is upper. There it is. That's so nice. Okay, thank you for asking for that demo. Um, that's, I should have had sample data with that in there. Okay, so let's put in our lower fence. Anything outside is an outlier, and the highest, the lowest value still inside is the left whisker. So 36.36, so that's sitting right here so these little ones are outliers so let's make those low those are orange so what's the that's not too close now what's the lowest value still inside the fence 48.8 we're going to name that cell find named range um, Lower whisker. This is great. Spreadsheets are so cool. Um, let me zoom in. So now our left whisker is 
the lower whisker. So this is the lowest value inside the fence uh, or uh, to, uh, to the right of fence. So this is the largest value inside the fence to the left of right fence, to the left of upper fence. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Look how nice all that is. Okay, so then these are what we can put in the box and whisker chart. All right, questions. I can see, I can click through the pictures and see some fried faces. So uh, you're all doing great. What's the yeah. formula for the fence? Oh, I'm sorry. One more time. The formula for the fences. Yep, it is uh, in your profile. It's Q3 plus one and a half times the IQR, and IQR is Q1 minus Q3 minus Q1. It was built right into that profile. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Is there a special formula for calculating the whiskers? Because, like, I tried the equals min ifs thing, but that one was throwing a data parse error. Huh. Um, when you say special formula, what do you mean? Like, like inside, the in, yeah, inside the spreadsheet. I was thinking it would be like the min ifs formula. Yeah, let's see. Um, I've tried to avoid turning this into a point and click exercise, but let's see if we can get, I'm curious if it'll make us a box and whisker chart. Different domains like finance has domain, has uh, approaches to uh, drawing fences that are based on much more um, candlestick, uh, based on, uh, five columns. You're gonna make me put five candles in the candlestick. That's you're really not gonna draw it for just one, um, so it won't do it. So I'm not aware of any formula that does it. Um, you could program a macro that does it. That could be cool. I can just do it manually. That's fine. Okay. Um, I only had one outlier anyway. I'm glad you had one. Um, so let, let's go back and see what our next step is, and then we'll be done for the night. Uh, I'll let you crunch on this this week, and then we'll do the analysis. So next. I have one question. If yeah. we have data, uh, we, we are just uh, working for n equals 17. If this one is 1,700, so how can we, uh, uh, we calculate whisker and fence the same way? I mean the hand? <laughs> um, I was like, if you're working with a great big data set? Yes. Um, how would you calculate it? I would use, um, you, I guess it depends on your tool. Um, if I were in, in the, most of the time with a great big data set, you'll probably be in a spreadsheet where you can do a sort and you're almost always going to be sorting your data anyways for some other reason so that would be an approach in the spreadsheet um, in i'm thinking about python it might be a little hairy if you were doing it in some tools i would end up just having to get a sorted list i think um, or use a tool that takes in all the data and does it itself. So um, that's probably what, uh, in industry, you're almost always going to be probably using a, a tool that does it. So stat key, um, I believe, does stat key give it to us? Um, there, are, there are a bunch of tools that will make a box plot just by dropping in the range of data. Um, but we're doing it by hand. So um, I'd say sort the data, 
and then you all have to find is the area of the sort where the fence lies. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, good question. Thanks for asking such good questions. So uh, the last step is if I can find my uh, there it is. Okay. So um, well, not the last step. I will do these very quickly. So once you've done the main aggregated responses, now you're just going to, we're going to do it in this exercise. We're actually going to slice it uh, manually because I want you to have the experience of thinking about data, not as, I want you to be the operator on the data and not some other tool. So select all your data and sort the data by the slicer response. Oh, sorry. You're Copy not sharing. It. Oh, thanks. I bet that drives you all nuts. <laughs> thanks for your patience. This is, this is a lot. So um, back on our, here. So uh, create new tabs in your spreadsheet, one for each of your possible slicer responses. Name the tabs logically without spaces or weird characters. Then move your data, copy your aggregate data from your first sheet into your slicer tabs. Select your data and sort by the slicer question and just chop out the responses that are not the focus of that tab. And then you just repeat the process um, for those subsequent tabs. So um, part of this is to get you if you're not super comfortable with spreadsheets to have had the experience of doing a, uh, a medium size spreadsheet project. So here we've got, do you own a car? Yes or no. So I'm going to, um, I was, we were doctoring data to answer good questions. So I'm going to add slicers. So in my case, I'm going to have two additional tabs. So I can just come down here and duplicate the sheet. I should have said duplicate. You don't have to copy it manually. So I'm going to duplicate it again for yes and no car. And then I'll rename it. So sliced, um, or I could say subset, subset, no car. And subset yes car and now let's get a zoom back out and so we can reuse all of our nice work we did over here um, all we got to do is tweak that named range so that's that's quite handy now notice what we got is we actually got duplicated named ranges we got copied named ranges with new um, uh, with the prefixes of the new sheets. So our work is quite easy for us. Um, all we have to do is get rid of the, so get rid of the yeses on the noes and the noes on the yeses. So in this case, um, and the reason I'm doing this instead of filtering is that um, different spreadsheets have different behaviors with ranges that go through filtered values. And if people are new to spreadsheets, sorting all that out is a distraction from the, the uh, exercise. So I'm selecting the columns I want to sort by, data, uh, sort range, I've got a header row. This time I'm sorting by car owned, and so now I'll get them nicely aggregated. So I'm on my no car sheet, so I'm just going to start down here in the yeses and uh, chop the yeses out. And then I'll come over here and say subset no. Um, did I get new? Oh, yeah, I did. OK, so subset no vehicle scaled score aggregate. I'm going to edit this to be a, log a new logical name. This is no longer aggregate. This is, um, this is vehicle. Now it's kind of silly. I'll just call it no no car scaled score, no car SS. And so then I can just pop over here and tweak my formulas. Oh, look, it even did. 
that's great wow that that's uh these are great things so you can you would just have to do a double check because um i want to make sure that it's it moved everything over correctly so again keep your finger over f2 and just pop down your formulas your yeah your formulas and make sure that they're grabbing and pulling from what makes sense um so i'm just going to do an f2 make sure that it all moved um in there no car ss that looks good now we can do our analysis again which is let's see how these fences came out so oh good we've got um we've got an outlier here too so um our oh just kidding sorry uh left whisker no i'm, I'm i think you have the definitions for fence and whisker flipped in uh, over yeah. here on the yeah left uh, left whisker the right fence will have an outlier there's a max over the right fence okay sorry i'm i need copy yeah i know i know that feeling so um yeah so we've got a right uh a right fence and so we need to grab our right whisker so 69 7 it's going to be right in there so our in this case this is going to be so now i want to cover my range and say no car upper whisker and select that value is this one with one outlier Okay, well, that's right. Um, so then this is. Oh, I have to do. Um, there it is. Okay. Good. So our right. The right fence is our max is above the right fence. No car, upper whisker, good. And lower left fence. So our minimum is on the inside of the fence. So we, so our left whisker is our min. Cool, so in this case, our data has all this um, adjusted values, but you can see now our IQR, our, our data is packed. It's centered around uh, the center with a tiny little IQR. Um, so that's the process. Uh, so what we want to do for by next week is in your Google Drive folder, have those exported, have those um, box plots um, saved. So once you... Um, it even tells you, look, nice people. So we can right click. Once you generate it, you'll save that image. You want to make a little spot um, maybe inside to save them all and then rename them something logical. Um, so I'd put it in here and then upload it to your drive. So this would be no car uh, uh, strip survey, no car box plot and get in the habit of file names should never have spaces in them um, over in the unix linux world that's complete anathema so i encourage you to start naming files in transferable friendly ways and um, i think that does it for our uh, sequence
Yep, and then right click the resulting image, save them in your local drive, then upload them with sensible names to your Google Drive directory. Um, and then we'll do the analysis next week. Okay, Whew. that's some serious spreadsheet action we got tonight. Um, so uh, I hope you, I'm glad you still have 24 folks hanging on. This is this is good. If you can make uh, make friends with spreadsheets, you have uh, you've got a got a magic wand. So um, thanks again for coming. A couple notes. I am uh, once again I'm inundated with emails and uh, projects. And so I'm, I'm trying to limit my um, my one-on-one -on -one student help to my six office hours a week. So um, if what I'm how I'm approaching this is, if you'd like dedicated help, let me know about which office hour you want to focus with me on. And so if you think about like a half hour time in any of my six office hours during the week, um, I will hold that for you and if someone else comes in i will invite them to hang around and maybe i can help if you're working on something for a little while um, but so that gives me like 12 half hour slots a week um, to do one-on-one -on -one help with students and i love doing that and it's really great um, but i just want to let you know that i'm i'm for my own sanity i'm trying to stay scheduling help only within those office hours monday tuesday wednesday um, the database project that I'm working on with CCAC students is now in full swing and is being used by towns to do code enforcement stuff. And so it's, um, I'm supporting a whole system out there and, it, and it's, uh, it's quite a consuming thing to do. So I appreciate your patience with my overall uh, work levels and, um, and I apologize in advance if I have lag time in, in responding to questions. So. Any questions for the whole group before we adjourn for the evening? So next week is the, this week is the organizing of the data and next week is fun because we'll get to be looking and comparing. Um, it's, uh, it's a very common refrain uh, when you talk to data scientists that they'll say, the analysis took me, yeah, you know, I, I worked on moving the data around and getting in the right spots and recoding and organizing for a week, and then I did the analysis for six hours, and and uh, and that's the that's the big exciting part. So part of data analytics and being uh, fluent in that data pipeline is is, is uh, knowing the tools well enough that you can minimize the data munging, as they call it, uh, as much as you can. So uh, being a whiz with a spreadsheet and being able to do uh, ranges and selecting and moving and copying on the keyboard, those kinds of things will help um, keep the process moving. So next week, tune in next week, same time uh, for strip survey analysis. So just please bring those, um, have those images in your drive and then we'll put them in the, um, I'll get the analysis sheet worked up again this week. So thanks for coming. Make sure you uh, did your attendance. Uh, just your name and your time uh, that will be helpful and if you have comments or questions in there um, I hope to get to them uh, when I record attendance and uh, I'll stop recording and I hope to get this recording up in the next few days but if you really need the recording and you're stuck call me and I can send you a raw link um, but it's not posted so thanks again for your patience and have a great week awesome thank you bye okay. see ya I have Thank one you. question. Yep. Uh, so I have the slicer, but not just yes or no. I have a six answer actually. So <laughs> yes, unfortunately. <laughs> Do you have answers across all six? Yeah. So I have to uh, to prepare. I think I have to prepare six different sheets for can all we, of them. What what's uh, can we group them somehow? Uh, what are the what are the options? This is totally different. Uh, maybe I can. Maybe I can do it. I mean, uh, I asked the. <laughs> I asked them uh, uh, which uh, which. Uh, what do you recycle? They say paper, electronical, the glass. You know, they are separate. But maybe I can uh, come together three or four. Depends on the answer. If this is okay. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, yes. I'm gonna prepare six. 
different. Um, I well, think the, <laughs> the downside to doing six is that not only is it a lot of work, but your and your number in each of those bins will mean that your your box plots aren't don't make a whole lot of sense if you don't have more than six values. So I would do is is sort by your slicer response and look for ones that you can collapse logically that allow you to have um, sliced subsets that are has as many people in them as possible um, because we want to have like a min of six per group ideally but we won't always get there okay okay thank you so much yep hi um this is Dokash. hi okay please um for one for my responses i have a few i have a out of 20 response that i got i got uh, i have 17 that is no and I have three that is yes. And also when it comes to um, the percentiles and the percentages, I have three of them that are zeros, zero percent. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, so I mean, they were all the way on the side of the spectrum. Yes. Did they happen to be the same as the no's? Um, you mean the, the percentages? Like were the people that did zero the same as the people that were in that small group? The people that gave me the zeros are part of the no's. They were all in the no's. And you They're all in the no's. They're all in the no's. Okay. And the people that gave me the yeses, they're the ones that have the highest percentages. And they're just three. Let's, um, and this is a, for those of you that are still on the call, this is probably useful. How about, um so for a box plot if you only have three numbers you're gonna have uh don't make a box plot with just three let's let's say that five would be the minimum because five would allow you to have each of the components um so if it's just if it's n uh less than five uh just list the stats so list the median and the n um and that makes uh, maybe min max and n median min and max how about that okay if i have what do you mean is if i have less than five yes so, so if you have a subcategory that when you slice it you only have you said three? Yes, three yeses. So then your N would be the number of responses is less than five. So don't even worry about making a box plot. Just compute your median, min, and max. The middle and the ends. Okay. I have something kind of similar. I had three Slacer questions, but no one answered one of them. Oh, interesting. So I really just have two. I so guess. you had two different slicers and your spectrum. I had yeah, I had there were three slicer questions. It was like where do you live? Urban, suburban, rural. No one picked rural. So okay. so should I just I guess not do anything with that one? Just put no responses there. Yeah, no no responses. Um it was not there's not you're not gonna make a subcategory for analysis. Okay. Statisticians are um, almost always using a set of variables about the respondents to make logical groups. And so being able to document uh, in your spreadsheet, maybe in a, in a little text box or in your uh, next week in your analysis, you'll be able to say, I made these choices because the data were in this shape. So what was your other slicer? No, the, I had the three slicer question. Like, where do you? Oh, response, the, slicer response. Yeah, the three, three responses to the question. Yeah, and, good. Yep. So, so just yeah. ignore your, uh, uh, you had zero responses for rural. Okay, cool. Okay, brings Thank me you. back to my soybean field days where I was. Yeah, I was, well, I guess just because of where we are, I didn't, people it might pull from a wider area, but I guess not. Yeah, interesting, thanks. Yeah, thank you. So I have, I had um, five and one zero and two of them are one each. So I have a pretty good mix of two of the items. So do I just, what do I do with the ones? 
and when you're saying what these are remind me what what you're the ones are what I did political party so um, I've got a pretty good group of Democrat and uh, independent but I have one Republican one libertarian oh so that they only had one response for those um, right those slicers so in that case they'll do the same thing of you, you don't need to visualize it you'll say n of one the value was this um, okay just so, in the notes part okay yep. okay and then we'll transfer this over into that shared google doc so we can all see it in one big scroll so interesting so only one republican yeah whoa wow that's so interesting i thought it would be more i thought this would be one that would be yeah. more spread out with everybody like i thought oh well, maybe like because i had a political which that's what nobody put just trying to cover all the bases there you know Nobody yeah. said apolitical. Yeah. Huh. Very, very interesting. Wow, these are such interesting times. Um, I was just, one of my students earlier this morning, a veteran was um, telling me a lot of, a lot of positive stories about current administration. And I don't hear a lot of positive stories. And it was a good reminder how we've got a huge diversity of experience in this country <laughs> to try to figure out how to make decisions together. Oh. Very tricky. As a veteran, I'd be happy to end your day with the opposite, if you'd prefer. <laughs> <laughs> if, you'd, if you'd like, says the can has been opened. Um. <laughs> I, I think I've worn out my thumb sending facts to folks, but wow. on, my real question is, when were your office hours? I have a program question, not a score question. Yep, I'm going to do a quick screen share. They're just at the top of um the site so it's sandwiched it's that row sandwiched in between data and programming so it's oh, okay these so it's basically five to six monday through wednesday and then the earlier midday ones are right after my morning class will that link take take me to set up a meeting or do you just can uh, I just tell you now? Reason. So I, I turn on my Zoom meeting at as close to five or the office hours as I can, and then you just hop in. It's the same Zoom link for as for class. That works. Yep. All right. Well, I will see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys, and I won't bring up Paul. Okay. <laughs> so it's an interesting time, so uh, uh, maybe we can chat about it uh, in a smaller group. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Bye. My last question, sorry about that. Uh, how can I find the, the you, you did on this lesson, the exact spreadsheet? How can I find it? Yeah, let me, um, well, the way you can actually find it is just by going into my, um, so my folder is called uh, Loretta Fuel Types. Uh, so uh, I'm also can send you the link right now. Um, and I'll post it on our file. So anyone link can view. So let's make this, this is the view only. So let's put this on the schedule. So we'll do, um, strip survey results. So we'll make, we'll call this will be the sample. Uh, it is the 22nd to 22 SEP. Okay, so now if you come back to the schedule and refresh, it's right there. That's it. Oh, I wasn't sharing screen. Oh no. Okay, so I just put the link uh, in the schedule right here. So if you refresh, it is this one, sample analysis sheet from 22 SEP. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good yeah. night. Yeah, you too. There it is, grid on. So got a couple, a couple uh, folks around. How's, how's it going? Can I help? Hey, I just had a quick question. I didn't know about the attendance policy since I um, 
added the cross pretty 